Hey guys, I got an interesting project here. This is a 40 year old reupholstery job that came back to me. Uh, probably about three or four or five job changes in between there and the customer actually had to track me down to find me because I, I was at one point I was in Wellesley, Massachusetts and that's where I, I had done the chair. But what I find interesting is that um, both times the customer had their own fabric and both times they picked a busy pattern which uh, is interesting um, on, only because of the diamond tufting. So this is the old fabric, very busy, it was a cut velvet, it's kind of a nice fabric. And this is the new fabric and it's very busy, even busier than the first one. And the interesting thing about that is this is a Victorian chaise from about 1860 to 1900, somewhere around there. It is old. Um, the seat in beautiful condition. Nice job whoever did it last time, right? <laughs> uh, if I do say so myself. So um, the thing about tufting, diamond tufting, I mentioned this maybe in some other videos, is that um, you know, when, when upholstery, uh, in the beginning years of upholstery, uh, many, many years, you know, it's probably like 300 years, uh, the fabric selections were very few and far in between, and uh, most of them were bland. So to give you an idea, you either had silk taffeta, which was bland, or a horsehair fabric, which was bland. The choices on a horsehair fabric were black and black with diamonds. That's it. And silk was very flat. You could get different colors, but it was a very flat looking fabric. It wasn't interesting at all. So it was up to the upholsterer to enhance a piece of furniture, and that's what you have here. So um, I kind of I feel funny sometimes when somebody brings me a busy fabric because what it does is it takes away from the beautiful workmanship up here. So I'll show you what I mean. So instead of having a bland fabric where the tufting will enhance the fabric and the piece, you have a busy fabric where the tufting gets lost a little bit. And it's, it's kind of a sad story, isn't it? But I wanted to just show you, I'm just going to do the beginnings of how I start with the tufting too. And so I took the old fabric off and what happens with this is it's going to be put on in three sections and you want to put the middle section in first. Why do you do that? Because on the sides here you want this to pleat folded this way, not the open way, which would be if you did these two first. I'm not sure if you followed that, but I just wanted to get maybe two maybe one or two or maybe even three buttons on just to show you how I start. Now it does have a center point so you see I'm trying to, this is, the, this is my goal right here to get a button right in here. Right so I have to line up. Now if you've seen my other videos you know when you measure for tufting you want to measure with the soft tape and you go into the hole believe it or not all the way across and then you add that at least at least three inches. Sometimes I add four on this, which is a little different than a regular, right? Same thing up and down. You want to make sure you go in each button to get the proper measurement, which I did. And then you, on this one here, I had to make sure my center point, you know, I had my center point lined up too. So it's going to be right about there. So I know that this is just going to fall on me, this fabric. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a couple of pins and pin it up here. You can pin tack it if you want or you know if you're in a hurry you can even use a needle just to get it just to get it up there. I'm going to turn this a little bit. I think if I turn this you guys will see this a little bit better. Let me just turn this this way. Yeah that's probably better. So I already have 22 buttons already strung with the tufting twine that I have. I have my button needles both both ends through the button needle, only about three or four inches. You don't want it too close to the button up here because you'll never get it through. And then I'm going to line it up like so. I'm right in the middle of the pattern and then I'm going to project from there to where the other button holes. And so I'm feeling for the other buttons hole. This is, you're working blind here you guys. So you're getting a pleat going and you're getting the pleat, right? That's the button hole right there. Just a hint sometimes of the pleat. You don't, you're not going to be able to get the whole pleat. Just a hint. And your pleat has to be going down. Okay, not up. Okay, so I think I did a good job there. I'm just going to go right through. Guess what? I have something else to contend with back there. I have, oh boy. There's a piece of wood. There's a wood frame back there that I have to go around. So what I'm going to do is pull this through. See my other videos, um, you need to do a slip knot in the back here. But you want to put a piece of cotton or Dacron in, and you, you could go on to the Broadway Upholstery School. You're already on that right now, you guys. You can go to another, we show you how to do slip knots. 
go go to the slip knots and uh, we show you how to do that because you're not going to be able to see what I'm doing back yet. Okay, I just want to do this. Let's just do this. Okay, so so now we have that middle one in, which is the key, right? So what I'm going to do from here is I am going to be projecting now to the next button, the pleats. This one really worked out well over here. And then it has to come down here. This is why they call it diamond tuck. And you see, this is what you do. You kind of, you, you have to plan ahead. And you always have to keep your fabric loose when you do this. You can't pull it tight anyone which way. So the next button I'm probably going to put in would be up in here. And then I'll put this one in. So, and then I'll, I'll switch over here. So you want to do it evenly. And you're always working from the middle out, right? So I said I wanted to show you, I just, I, I thought this was a cool project just to quickly show you guys. I think I'm going to be doing more of these because I find we can get more out like when we do short little ones like this. And we're still going to do, we just uh, posted um, a, a multiple part video um, that you might want to check out too on the channel. And we'll keep doing those ones too as well, and as well as the quick fixes. So we're really excited. There's a lot going on here, and we'll see you next time. Thanks.